Just gotten back from, um, actually not my LFS. Is a uh, fished about 45 minutes away. And I got them to, um, hold, I was messaging, asking them if they had any yellow chorus rasses or melanorus rasses. They said they had some yellow chorus rasses, so I got them to, um, hold one of them for me. I'll see this. Uh, pretty sure it's a female Melanorus Rass as well. And then there's this fish that I uh, had in my old tank. And I really liked it. And I've been looking for one for a while now. Because the fish always had tons. They come from Western Australia, these ones. The fish always had tons. And as soon as I got my tank cycled, I could not find one anywhere. Um, but I finally uh, found one. And it's called a Happy Moment Rabbit Fish. Pretty sure you probably couldn't get them anywhere but WA. Because no one's going to really want to pay for the shipping for, um, in America to get these shipped over because they're not the prettiest fish but they're one of my favourite fish and there's no room there's something to float I could float like one bag in there probably so I'm just going to chuck her up in the main tank and turn the lights off and leave them for about 15 minutes um, while the with the lights off and then I'll drip acclimate them and I'm pretty sure they're all from the same system they came from different tanks, but the chorus rats and the melanorus rats were in tanks next to each other. And the rabbit fish, it might be a different system because it came from a tank above these two. So I might end up floating that one in a different bucket. Uh, it depends if I have um, enough of like thin uh, tubing to drip acclimate them with. But I'll get to put him in the tank and I'll be back um, in 15 minutes once the uh, temperatures in the tanks. And then trap it in the bag, same as the tank. And also, while the um, fish are acclimating up there, just a quick update on all the corals. So, everything is doing really well. The uh, zoanthids um, are all open up now. Um, this is not pissed anymore, and the grand star polyps is all open. And this is it's not too open at the moment. Uh, because the lights have only been on for about an hour, but um, this gets super duper uh, hairy, like um, when it's fully open, as uh, all its super tentacles are out, like flailing all over the place. But um, and this Montipora here has gone from like a gold colour to a um, lime green sort of. Um, but I'm having a little bit of a problem with this. You can see there on the edge there's a bit of um, tissue damage and um, I got my phosphates tested at my um, LFS and they said it was 0 0.5 parts per million which is really high, it's supposed to be 0 0.0 like 3 um, and so I'm not quite sure if it is that high though, or, um, because everything um, in the tank is like super open, like it's doing really well, like this blaster here is like, it is really fluffy at the moment, the hammers and torches and all that, they're not super extended at the moment because um, the lights have only turned on, but they're all doing really well. These uh, recordings get like double the size of what they are at the moment. Everything's doing really well in the tank. Um, so I don't know if the phosphates are really that high, but I was supposed to get the phosphates tested at the fixture I was going to today, but I forgot. I, I got the water sample and I left it at home when I went to um, go to my fish store to get, um, get the water tested. But um, I have bought some CCAM uh, Fosgard. Um, and a little like filter sock bag sort of thing that I can always put in the sun um, if needed for uh, to remove the phosphates. Um, but I'm also not sure what is putting that much phosphates in because I've, I've got two fish in there at the moment and I'm feeding them about one block over five days. So that's really not that much food going into the tank. Um, and I've been doing the water changes weekly. Um, but if you guys know what it is, you can let me know down in the comments. Um, cause I'm not saving too much algae in the sand either. The sand is pretty white, 
in the video it looks a bit um, more red, but in the real life it's pretty right. It has a little bit of uh, diatoms, I think, on them. And this, this here has, I've left this with, um, like, uh, how it is, because it has, I think they're dinos on it, um, which is the only thing that has it on in the whole, has it on in the whole tank. Uh, not, also not, f f my phosphate's been that high, none of the corals are affected apart from this, especially this daisy coral. It gets get about double, double size of this as well when it's fully open. But also, if you look on the rocks too, there's like a bit of algae, but it's not covered in algae. So it makes no sense how my phosphates can be that high. But um, if you think you know what it is, just let me know down in the comments. Um, that would be much appreciated. So we've got a uh, sort of a medium to fast, probably a fast drip going. And with uh, these guys, I'm going to put a um, tea towel over the top as a lid because the rasses are uh, jumpers. And when I, like, as soon as I put this yellow chorus rass in here, it was trying to jump out, it was bouncing all over the place. So I'll be putting the lid on. Um, the tea towel does a lid. And it has about three litres of water in it. So once it gets to around, it's already probably got about one litre of water from the tank in it. So once it gets around um, seven ish litres, I'll take the fish out um, and add them to the tank. Um, I'm not going to do anything special like turn the lights off um, for the tank, quite the blackout because in my experience it hasn't really helped at all um, with the fish being uh, acclimated to the tank so I'm just going to scoop them out and put them in the tank and also with this um, happy moment I know some people don't like to use nets but with the happy moment type of rabbit fish and you kind of got to use nets for one of it for them because they um have spines, their dorsal fin and the fin on their belly. Uh, their, their spines are venomous. Um, they won't kill you, but they'll hurt quite a bit um, if you get stung by them. Um, I was reading this thing. If, uh, if you get stung by them, you put your hand in um, hot water, like as hot as you can handle without like, it like hurting you. Um, and it apparently helps to like speed up like how fast the poison goes away. Um but yeah I'll be back once I've got like about seven, eight or six to eight liters of water in the bucket. Um I'll be back then. The chillers on making some noise again, it's pretty loud. Um but I got the fish in now. The Melanorus rasp really really good. Um blue and orange and then this chorus rice looks nice as well and I think I oh yeah, there's happy moment rabbit fish I'll, I'll walk around this up to get a bit of view it'll get a bit louder because the chillers chillers just down there but um here's a happy moment rabbit fish and with the uh with wrasses, with the fair wrasses, they don't bury themselves in the sand. They will, when they sleep, they uh, um, put like a mucus layer around themselves and that uh, um, like hide their smell from predators. And that's what that there is. It's it's mucus coat from a couple nights ago. But these wrasses here, um, they'll go into the sand when they sleep or when they're scared of dart into the sand. Um, so don't be afraid if you can't, but don't worry if you can't find your wrasse um, for like a few days. It's probably just in the sand bed. And these these guys are carnivores, they'll eat um, mice shrimp, brine shrimp, uh, yeah they'll eat that and they'll um, pick uh, like copepods and crustaceans off the rock as well. And with the melanorus they can 
uh, that they can eat hermit crabs. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And at the moment, uh, rabbit fish is a rabbit fish, it's a herbivore. Even though it's a herbivore, it will still eat um, mice, shrimp, and brine shrimp. But you want, you, you got to make sure you provide it with um, some like nori seaweed and stuff, um, uh, as well as the mice shrimp. Um, but yeah, that's it uh, for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.